This is a CBS News special report. I'm Chanel Call at the CBS News headquarters in New York. We're coming on the air this hour with some breaking news out of Baltimore. This is where the Francis Scott Key Bridge has collapsed after one of its columns was hit by a cargo ship. The Baltimore City Fire Department says it is unsure how many vehicles were on the bridge when this happened, but there was a tractor trailer on it. Take a look at this video. CBS's Jared Hill is here with more on this story. Jared, this video just so dramatic. Well, I mean, this is unbelievable, Chanel. Looking at this video where you see the ship hit one of the mm -hmm. columns and then the bridge just collapse into the water. Um, what we've been learning over the past couple of hours as we've been speaking with some of the officials there uh, is that as of now, they're searching for about 20 people, potentially. This is according to the Baltimore City Fire Chief uh, in some interviews from earlier this morning. Again, this happened around 1.30 or so uh, a.m., Darkness is making this search uh, that much more difficult. They are saying you can see it just how black it is in that uh, that scene there uh, again. So a large ship we are learning hit a column there. The bridge collapsed. No word on the cause or exactly what happened in this situation. That's something that's being investigated. This is being referred to as a mass casualty response, although no word right now on if there are any uh, injuries or, or any fatalities yet. Right, and we're looking here, we should note, at live pictures of the scene, a very fluid operation. Mm -hmm. Jared, can you walk us through the search and rescue operation this hour? What's happening on the ground? Yeah, so we do know that there are some dive teams that have been dispatched to this region again because this is in the middle of uh, a river there in Baltimore that crosses uh, the harbor in, in the Baltimore area. And so mm -hmm. we know that there are multiple agencies, as you can see, a lot of the flashing lights. But again, the fact that this is so dark and that this is happening in the water is making a lot of this uh, that much more difficult, that much more harrowing of a, of a search. And what about the number of people who we now know might be missing? Right, so uh, at the first check, we had heard numbers somewhere around seven. The latest numbers we're hearing potentially double that, around 20 or so people. We do know again that there were uh, there was little traffic on the bridge this is 1 30 in the morning mm -hmm. on on a Tuesday and so not a ton of people were there but there was at least this tractor trailer uh, and potentially some other vehicles we are hearing reports of multiple vehicles having fallen into the water at the time uh, of this bridge collapse and so again we're waiting for more information likely waiting for daylight as these crews are able to just get a better feel for exactly what they're dealing with. And we can see lights and sirens uh, in these live images of the scene from Baltimore this hour. Jared, you mentioned it's a multi-agency response to the incident. What does that mean? Who's involved here? Yeah, so we do know that there is uh, Baltimore City Fire Department is involved with this. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also been some conversation with Coast Guards, um, seeing as how this is happening again in, uh, in, in a waterway there. Uh, we also know that the Baltimore City uh, mayor as well as the county executive for the county of baltimore uh, has been uh, have been in contact they're both on their way there we also know that the governor of maryland has been contacted regarding this as well and then you got to remember that this is a, a a bridge that is used by a lot of people to get not only around the baltimore area but there are some pretty major um airports in the area and so the the baltimore washington international airport has been telling people to use alternate routes if they need to get to the airport this morning. Uh, and so this could cause some pretty significant headaches for folks in that area as well. Yeah, I want to ask more about the area where this happened because my understanding is it serves as sort of an essential link of Interstate 695. So right. what's happening in the surrounding boroughs? Yeah, so this is, uh, again, this is a, a key a key bridge that is utilized by people in this area uh, around Baltimore. It's not the only bridge that's there, so it's mm. uh, not a situation where you know people are completely cut off, but this will definitely make um, a, cu a commute more difficult there. This is also a, a relatively, uh, as you can see here, this is not over top of a highway. It's not in the middle of uh, the city, but this is uh, a bridge that is utilized by a lot of folks in the Baltimore area uh, on a consistent basis. Okay, Jared Hill, thank you for this information. We pre appreciate this. Let's go live now to our Nicole Skanga, who's live on the ground. Uh, Nicole, I know you just got there moments ago, but walk us through what you're seeing and hearing there. Yeah, Chanel, a mass casualty event, a multi-agency rescue and recovery now underway. Just a harrowing scene. The Baltimore Fire Department chief saying up to 20 people plunged into the water when an outbound cargo ship collided with a main support beam of the Francis Scott Key Bridge here in Baltimore and multiple vehicles 
in the water as well, including a tractor trailer and a box car. There is just a massive effort underway by first responders, federal, state, local law enforcement, including dive teams that have been deployed, the U.S. Coast Guard, state and local police, the Maryland Transportation Authority, a top priority right now, of course, those rescue and recovery efforts. But we should point out that this is a major thoroughfare and a 950-foot cargo ship flagged in Singapore now sitting in the port of Baltimore. This partial collapse stalling a 1.5-mile bridge responsible for transporting approximately 11.5 million vehicles every day along that I-95 corridor connecting Florida up to Maine. And Nicole, you know, it's really hard to see in our live shot right now because it is still dark this hour. Can you tell us what you're seeing on the ground? Yeah, we are currently in the media staging area and everything is cloaked with darkness, but we do see first responders. We see uh, multiple uh, vehicles of state and local police, but again, very difficult to make out the scene, just sirens, um, you know, piercing through the darkness here uh, at the port of Baltimore. And the darkness must also make this a challenge for those rescue workers who are on scene. Can you talk a bit about the response? Yeah, we know that right now U.S. Coast Guard dive teams as well uh, as personnel from Baltimore Fire Department are in the water. They are searching for up to 20 individuals as well as a number of vehicles that, again, were plunged into the water during this collision happening at approximately 1.30 a.m. this morning. Um, and so uh, really these rescue and recovery efforts uh, are ongoing. Uh, that count has changed as the morning um, has sort of ticked on. Initially, we were hearing from law enforcement as many as seven people. That number has since gone up. So law enforcement and the fire department here trying to get a handle of just how many individuals impacted. Obviously, a, a massive tragedy, perhaps a silver lining that this did not occur during rush hour, of course, uh, happening at 1.30 a.m. when there was limited traffic here on the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Okay, N Nicole Skanga, thanks so much for this reporting. We appreciate it. Thank you. And again, a major portion of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore has collapsed overnight after being hit by a cargo ship. You were looking at live images there. CBS News will stay on this story. Our coverage continues now on CBS News Streaming. This has been a CBS News special report. I'm Chanel Call, CBS News, New York.